What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Paul Rowe and What's the Numbers I providing. Today we back with another profile piece. This was on Christopher Duran, a 14-year-old kid out of the Bronx, New York, who sadly on the morning of May 22nd, 2015, after stepping out of his building, walking to school with his little brother, was shot and killed in the street. What we're going to do in the video, we're going to take a deeper look into everything that happened with that situation and also what the outcome was for all those involved. Some of the things we know about the 14-year-old victim, Christopher Duran, is basically he's in the seventh grade at the time, you know, living on Sheridan Avenue. He has an older brother who they say is a member of a neighborhood crew, neighborhood gang called the 280 Gang. Now, there's some reports coming back that saying Christopher's a member of the same gang, but different reports coming from his family and others saying he's not a member, he's just loosely affiliated, being that his older brother was a member. Regardless of all that, at the time of his death, he did have at least already five arrests for different charges, some a robbery charge, assault charge, you know, fight and things like that. Now, police are playing this angle basically because in the video they sh they show a guy with a red flag on his face just walking right up to Christopher and shooting him basically. It's like a, he was the targeted, he was the um the target basically. Like it was a hit, it was a targeted hit that they was coming to do to basically shoot Christopher. He was the person they came to shoot. Now. So that everybody's like, how would your 14 year old kid, what he had to, what would he do to get shot and this that, and the third? This is where the gang, you know, the gang angle was coming basically that it was a back and forth war between two different crews, two different gangs, and that he got caught up basically in a turf war, gang war, you could say. So with the investigators now piecing the story together piece by piece, they come to find, they come to gain an idea why this 14 year old was shot and killed. They know there's a gang war going on between two different rival crews, and basically for some reason Christopher was a target that day. We don't know the exact reason why, but it's basically, you know, back and forth shooting, back and forth killing, back and forth fighting. And this, this, how, this is how these things play themselves out sometimes. So now, the investigators focus on who are the people responsible for this killing. You know what I'm saying? They want to identify the suspects. And, you know, today with cameras everywhere, the whole shooting ends up being on camera. So it doesn't take long for them to um, identify the suspects and release their name. One of them is a guy by the name of Travis Blotch, and the other is a guy by the name of Jeremiah Thomas. Now, Travis Blotch is in his 20s. And Jeremiah is still in his teens, 16, 17 years old. It doesn't take long for them to locate them and arrest them. The first one to get arrested is Travis Blotch. He gets caught in Binghamton, New York. And about a month later, Jeremiah Thomas gets arrested in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, they're both brought back to the New York to face these charges. And now the court proceedings start. So now with both suspects who are allegedly responsible for this murder in custody, they're brought back to New York where they're able to face the charges. Some of the charges they're hit with is murder in the second degree, manslaughter in the first degree, criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, and so on. They both go to Rikers Island where they sit for a couple years till March of 2018 when they both cop come and cop out to the same charge. Travis Blotch, who was fingered as a shooter, cops out to manslaughter in the first degree, and ends up getting 25 years in prison. Jeremiah Thomas, who was, a, who was supposed to be the lookout, he was out down the block on the corner making sure no cops or other gang members pulled up. He cops out to manslaughter in the first degree, but he gets sentenced to 17 years. So. That's the story we got right now. We didn't get the whole story as far as like why it happened out of the defendant's mouth because it didn't go to trial. They basically took the deal and you know, copped out so they could come home one day instead of going to trial, maybe losing trial and getting life with the possibility of no parole or something like that. So one thing I want to touch on real quick is that, you know, he was 14 year old kid. Some people say he was in a gang. Some people say he wasn't. Some people say he was a knucklehead. Some people say he was a good kid, you know, either or. Only thing I can say is that he was 14, which means he still had time to grow. Now, I don't mean as far as like physically, I mean as far as like, you know, as a person. He, if he was a knucklehead, he had time to grow to be maybe not a knucklehead, be a good person, be a better person rather. If he was a fighter, maybe he was, in, in time, he might have been able to channel that aggression, that fighting into something positive, like maybe boxing or wrestling or anything, or, or different type of sports, football, basketball, you understand? He was 14 years old. He still had time to grow in that way. Now, what I, what I say is that you're not always given the opportunity to grow because look, there's a bunch of kids at 14 that was in the wrong thing that ended up being great adults. You understand what I'm saying? Because they had the chance to grow. He was never given that chance to grow because he never seen 15, he never seen 16. So that's why I try to say when I do my videos and I try to give a little game to the youth, is basically you got opportunity to grow being that if you're a bad person, a knucklehead right now, not a bad person, but if you're a knucklehead, you get into trouble in school, you're going through stuff, you're getting locked up, right? You could change your life by growing, by maturing, by thinking smarter, moving better. but also know that you being a knucklehead or you being in the streets or you being around certain things it could stop you to where you won't be able to grow at all because you won't see the next day you won't see 15 you won't see 16 
And that's the part that I'm saying that's sad because even if he was a knucklehead or not, even if he was a bad kid, a good kid, whatever, he never had that chance to grow, basically. So we don't get it. We, we will we'll never know if he would have had a chance to grow as a person. You understand what I'm saying? But yo, you know, I don't like preaching too much. I just like, you know, giving a little game to the, to the, to the youth right now who check out my videos or to anybody who check out my videos. Honestly, it don't matter. Old, young, whatever. But yo, this was the number CV. Go check out the Patreon. Go check out the Instagram, the Cash App up there, the emails up there if you want to holler at your boy. And you know what I'm saying? Just keep tuning in. We got 21,000 subs. I appreciate y'all. And keep checking out. I got two more videos coming this week, so be on the lookout for those, man. I'm out of here. It's Paul Rowe. Peace.